All right, hi and welcome guys. We are working on this 3S project. We're gonna call this 3S part two, uh, WL Toys 144001. So I did manage uh, to get in my uh, 3S motor, or I guess it could be a 2S motor, but it's my brushless four poles motor, 3650, 4300 KV. Now I've got some experience with this motor. It's the same one that I am running on this WL Toys. 959 it is a great motor fast hauls butt and i've got the same 60 amp esc right here um and that is what i am going to run in this wl toys 144001 you can see it's a 2 or 3s lipo and it is a 60 amp esc with a fan and i like it very much now a couple problems already uh, came up as I started looking at this. So the first thing I noticed is these shells, as I said, are very low profile. I mean, they almost look smushed if you look at them. Uh, they have kind of an odd shape, although I think they look really nice. And so I need more height if I'm gonna run this ESC with a fan. So what I ended up doing in the last video, and you can check it uh, down below somewhere uh, if you missed it, I managed to take from the WL Toys 959 cars the uh, tower, the actual body tower, uh, it's that thing right here with these holes in it, the front and rear, and actually put it on the 144001. So you can see here these, these towers are a lot taller than the stalkers that come on it. So we got a little more height there, and that's going to help us lift the body shell up to incorporate and take into account some of the extra height of this ESC. I was actually very happy with this one that I got in the mail because if you compare it to the one I have on the other car, believe it or not, it looks almost the same, but it's actually shorter. So, you know, this is one of those things you just do not know what's gonna happen. Let me show you the difference. Uh, it is a definitely a much shorter ESC. It is a good, mm, gosh, probably almost like a half inch shorter. So it's just a flatter, more streamlined model. Still 60 amp, still pretty much should be the same, but shorter. So I was like, man, that's awesome. That's gonna help me keep that height down. So when I take a look at this uh, center bar on this car, there's basically like a little recess. It's like an indention. Uh, and that indention is where the ESC fits in. Now I was quite frustrated to find out that although I thought it would fit perfectly, this ESC, if you can look at this, is a little bit too wide. It's too wide for that indention. Not by much, but enough that even if you move this on off switch, you can see here it is not gonna fit. There's still a little bit of room that needs to be notched out or somehow maneuvered so this thing can fit. So I'm not 100% sure how I'm gonna do that. That's something to think about if you're trying to upgrade these cars. Let me see if I can get a better view here. Because if you can find a very small, low-profile ESC, maybe without even a fan, uh, you'll be very easily able to get this rolling without the higher body towers and without some of the other things that I'm having to do. So just a consideration. If you really feel like you need a fan, great. But if you think, well, I could probably let this thing work without a fan and it would be fine. Uh, a lot of the LB racing cars do not have a fan, so that's entirely possible. So you can see here, I mean, if I want this thing to fit in this gap, I've got to figure out a way to notch something out of it or raise this up and have the ESC sit up higher. Either way, that's going to have to happen. I'm not sure what my options are going to be. But as you can see, I mean, this beautiful platform that I really want to use here um, does not give me a lot of options in terms of width unless I had a much smaller ESC. And since I just ordered this, I'm going to go with it. And uh, you may want to consider um, that in your next purchase of your ESC. Now, a few things I could do, um, I could grind this down a little without hopefully affecting the structural integrity. Um, I'm not sure how much of this is just extra plastic. I could probably notch out a little bit of this with a Dremel and probably not break through to the other side. I have a feeling there's probably a good bit of plastic there or at the very least I could get it to lay in here kind of nice. And that would be important for a couple reasons. Number one, we want to keep that height 
down. We don't want much height there. Um, so that's the first problem. Uh, the second is situation that um, I ran into. I've actually got a couple things that happened today. Um, if we stick this thing back on, which, I mean, don't you love to look at that? Look how clean that is. Look how nice that is. I mean, sticking this big clunky thing here. Yeah, it's just not as, not as pretty. But you're going to have a fan. You're going to have a ton of power. Why not? So as I was trying to just slowly start to work on these bolts, you can see barely their heads got a little bit stripped. And so I'm not sure if they use a ton of Loctite on here or whether they're using blue or whether they're using red, but I stripped these. So now I've got to basically drill these out, you can see there, and get them out without totally scratching everything up and ruining everything. And then from there, pulling them out. So I've heard bad stories about these being very tight as well, the ones that fasten to the motor mount. So we've got a little bit of an issue there and you know, kind of sucks. The other thing I did uh, playing around was morph the shape of this a little bit. I got it under the heat gun and I sort of popped the sides out. I don't know if you can tell. Uh, there's, there's not scratches on it. That's just that plastic shell covering that I need to eventually pull off. And that gives me a little extra, a little extra space here on the sides as this is going to pop out a little more. But all in all, that's the update I've been playing with. Just trying to get the fit right, trying to see how we're going to fit this in, uh, what's going to happen when we put this motor in there. I think it's going to be awesome, but we're going to have to work on a few things with fitting this. So that's the update. Let me know if you have any ideas or um, any suggestions. The other challenge that, of course, could make this a big boondoggle or waste of time is if we strip out this gear really quick. And that's a big problem. Hopefully we can find a substitute. The other question that I don't know the answer to is what size is the shaft on this? Now I went with the assumption, I think through normal, numerous sources, that it's the same as the 959, meaning it is a 3.175 millimeter shaft. And so I'm assuming the pinion is the same. And even though some 550 motors may have a five millimeter, most of the ones I saw online, and even one generic one like this I saw, had the 3.175 or 3.176 uh, millimeter shaft. So these are all the, 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 the challenges of being, you know, one of the first groups, I guess, of people to build these things out. And hopefully we'll get it all figured out. I have a feeling it's all gonna work out beautifully and it's gonna be one speedy beast. So let me know your thoughts and comments and any suggestions you have to those questions. If you like the video, you wanna follow the journey of getting this thing brushless, then go ahead and hit like and subscribe.